mysterious and seldom seen hunters of the deep. In one corner, the dragonfish. In the other, the fangtooth. If they ever met each other in a battle of top predators, and they might because they live at similar depth, who would win? In this unique investigation, we'll discover their secret weapons, their teeth, and their amazing jaws, and why they're more feisty than you think. This video comes with a warning. Even though the deep ocean covers more than half the planet, we don't know a whole lot about what goes on down there. That said, there's more detail here on the Induna channel than anywhere else on the web. So let's introduce the fish. The fangtooth is a strange looking fish and has no close relatives, although there are two species in its group. Because it looks so scary, it's sometimes called the ogre fish, or the saber tooth. And although they look scary, they're only about as long as your hand. The fang tooth lives deeper than about 600 metres or 2,000 feet, and sometimes much deeper, up to 5,000 metres, nearly 15,000 feet. And it's hardly ever seen, even by fishermen. This is some very rare footage. Our other contestant is the deep sea dragonfish. It's a name used for perhaps a hundred different species of fish, but most often for the barbled dragonfish, which is like this one. They too are quite small, at about 30 centimeters or a foot, but they can eat prey almost twice their size. And like the fangtooth, they're fearsome predators of the deep. Even though we don't get much chance to see them in their native habitat in the dark ocean, and we only get to see them on the few occasions when they're sometimes trawled up from the depths of the sea, we can be detectives going on clues from what the deep creatures themselves look like, what weapons and sense organs they use, a few experiments and fluke observations, and some understanding of that deep dark world that they live in. Actually, although there's no sunlight here, it's not that dark. It's bursting with bright flashes of bioluminescent light, the cold chemical light that many creatures down here make. And to cope with this very strange light environment, deep sea fish have come up with unique solutions for vision and for camouflage in the dark. So despite their differences, the fangtooth and the dragonfish have many things in common. The first thing you notice is they're both black. In the dragonfish, surprisingly black. They're using pigments that absorb light like crazy, and that's because they don't want to be seen either by prey or predator. In 2020, a team at the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History in the USA noticed that it was often difficult to see the detail of these deep-sea specimens. Under a microscope, they observed that their skin cells are crammed full of pigment granules. This super-dark skin is found in both the fangtooth and the dragonfish. The dragonfish even have a black stomach lining that hides any glowing food they happen to eat. The teeth. You can't help noticing they've got very big teeth, some of the largest ever compared to body size in the whole ocean. They're so big that the fang tooth has slots in its upper jaw to take the biggest fangs of the lower jaw and so it doesn't pierce its own brain when it shuts its mouth. The other thing you notice about the teeth in both the dragonfish and the fangtooth is that they're both transparent, looking very similar in both species. In 2019, scientists at the University of San Diego discovered that they're made up of very, very small crystals, nanocrystals, that scatter light and make them transparent. 
so they can't reflect any of that bioluminescent light that flashes around in the dark down there. But don't be fooled, these teeth are as hard as a great white shark's and needle-like, so they pierce their prey. And because they're so long, the teeth also make a deadly cage that can trap their prey inside. But that's where the similarities stop. And one of these species is way more sophisticated than the other, at least in the light department. So let's have a look at the differences in light sensitivity between the dragonfish and the fangtooth. Many deep sea fish are sensitive to blue light, the most common type of the natural chemical light made by the bioluminescence of all sorts of creatures down here, including dragonfish themselves. Dragonfish are also known as barbelfish because they carry a little barbel on a line in front of them, and it's thought they might light this up with blue light in the dark. What you're seeing here is shot with artificial lights, but if you were to switch them out, this is more like what it would look like in the deep. In the dark, the barbel becomes a lure, shining out in blue light and attracting prey from all around. They're thought to be ambush predators, but nobody has ever seen a dragonfish catching food naturally in the dark. But there's something really surprising in their eye pigments. They can see in red light as well as blue, allowing them to see fish that can't see them. Such red sensitivity has been found in no other kind of fish so far. But as well as seeing in red light, they can make it too, with a special organ beneath the eye, illuminating their prey with an invisible red torchlight. The red sensitivity was discovered by Julian Partridge and Ron Douglas in 1995. I was lucky enough to film deep sea fish with them both. To this day, they're researching the sophisticated chemicals in the dragonfish eyes that detect red light. And in one kind of dragonfish, they found pigments similar to chlorophyll in plants that enhance the red sensitivity, and which the dragonfish may have recycled from its diet. A bit like the proverbial eating carrots to see better in the dark. But there's another extraordinary thing that the dragonfish are doing with light, and it's only recently been discovered. In 2016, a team from Japanese NHK television used low-light cameras to see an astonishing flash of blue light all over the body of a dragonfish. This is a reconstruction, but you can see the original footage, and I'll put a link in the blurb below. But what about the fangtooth? It hasn't got any light organs at all and yet certainly lives in the pitched black depths. But it makes up for that lack of brains in its brawn. It's got powerful muscles, and it's thought by some to be a highly mobile and aggressive hunter. In fact, when we caught this one in a trawl and brought it into a tank, it tried to bite our hands and was really feisty, biting into a brush that we used to clean the tank, and going after a dead shrimp in the tank too. But what about the fangtooth's visual detection system? Some videos will tell you that the fangtooth's eyes are really small, but in fact I think they're reasonably large, and more than likely to see the blue light of bioluminescence. But the fangtooth also has two other very good detection systems. The first is chemical. Two scientists called Childress and Meek in 1973 did some experiments with live fantus that they had collected in a trawl. And they took them back to land and, and put them into a cold tank and they lived for nearly two weeks in the dark. Using a dead shrimp, they rubbed it on the tail of the fangtooth and it always turned around, orientating towards the shrimp. And when they put it on the mouth, it attacked. They concluded that the fangtooth relies on what's called contact chemoreception, where they get an eating response from the prey bumping into them in the dark. That's likely just to be a close detection system. But what about a little further away? 
Turns out they've also got a superb system for detecting minute vibrations from their prey. Even some of the smaller ones, like this little crustacean, a two millimeter long copepod. They can detect these small movements with structures called lateral lines, which all fish have. But fangtooths have some of the biggest lateral line canals ever seen. They are the big bumpy grooves on either side of the body. In microscopic detail, these lines have sense organs inside called neuromasts lying at the bottom of the groove and covered in a goo of mucus. Little hairs stick out from these organs, allowing them to detect very accurately the distance and direction of anything moving nearby. Combine that with the bioluminescence it can see from a distance with its eyes and its close-up chemical sense. Its detection system, although not as sophisticated as the dragonfish, is obviously up to the job. And now we come to the mouths of these fishes. Both the fangtooth and the dragonfish have very large heads accommodating massive jaws for their body size and can swallow big food whole. Both have different ways of doing it. It's been discovered that some species of dragonfish open their jaws like Pez dispensers thanks to a flexible joint at the base of their skulls. The joint allows the fish to swallow bigger prey which they can trap in their fang-like teeth. In the belly of this boa dragonfish you can see the entire body of its last meal. The fang tooths too have large heads allowing them to eat relatively big fish. But fang tooths can't distort their mouths as much as the dragonfish. When they do swallow something really big, they can't use their gills in the normal way and start to choke. So instead, use their little pectoral fins to fan water over the gills while they swallow. This is called reverse direction ventilation and is a very useful trick to help the fang tooth swallow much bigger prey than it could otherwise do. So, what does this all add up to? Which is the better predator? Who would win if a dragonfish ever met a fangtooth? Let's sum up the case for and against. Both have excellent camouflage for the deep dark world that they live in. Both have extra dark skin with super dense pigment grains. Both have transparent teeth with special wide open crystal structures. The fan tooth is more muscular and better armoured with thick plates. It's got a great chemical and vibration detection system, but it's got no bioluminescent organs at all, and it's no match for the dragonfish when it comes to detecting light. The special red light system in dragonfish gives them the advantage. Both can eat very large prey. But even though the fangtooth has its reverse ventilation system, it's the dragonfish with its dislocating jaws that really allows it to swallow much bigger fish. So, in our hypothetical battle of fangtooth versus dragonfish, the dragonfish comes out the winner. But that's not quite the end of the story, because fangtooths have been found in shoals. How do we know? Sometimes, Several are found in a net at once. This picture shows quite a few and they're not just copies because you can see that they're all different fish of slightly different sizes and some different features around their eyes. So what if the fangtooth hunts in packs, rounding up their prey together, a bit like yellowfin tuna can do? Then they really would be awesome predators, able to take on dragonfish and many others in the deep. It's speculation, but maybe one day a shoal of these magnificently adapted deep sea fish will be found swimming together in surprising numbers. <laughs>